This is where he was killed, right here at the fork of this road. And you saw his body? Lying in the ditch with his eyes open. Can a five-year-old child ever forget such a thing? Not that, not that I remember. For 78-year-old Josephine Bowling, her childhood, her life, shaped by her father's murder more than 70 years ago. A murder that today stands as a metaphor for dreams deferred. The unhealed wounds of racism etched in stone. Enraged whites, jealous over the business success of a Negro, are believed to be the lynchers of Elmo Bowling. Too successful to be a Negro. He had the farm. He was employing about 40 people. He started a, a milk route where he transported milk from other blacks to the dairies in Montgomery. And then when he went to the churches, my mom carried a trunk of food and people bought plates from her. So, and ice cream. Sounds like in many ways your dad was the Jeff Bezos, the Amazon of his time, right? Yes. So he was killed because he was out of his place and deemed to aspire to go higher. How dare he, your father? How dare he? Elmer Bowling was 39, shot seven times by at least two white men, lynched along historic Route 80 near Montgomery in Louds County, Alabama, a road made famous by Martin Luther King Jr. and the thousands who marched from Selma to Montgomery. And what impact did your father's death have on your family? We lost everything, but it was something that we had to live with, adjust with, and, and go on. Elmore was one of untold numbers of successful black business owners throughout the country who found a way to thrive in the early 1900s. At the time of my father's death, he had $40,000 in the bank in Montgomery. It's estimated it would be worth what now? $500,000. The Bowling family story is one of generational wealth, not just lost, but stolen. A truth repeated across the country, a truth with severe consequences. Today, a typical white family has nearly eight times the wealth of their black counterparts. Josephine says after her father's murder, white debt collectors fraudulently claimed they were owed and took everything, plunging her family into poverty. The older brothers quit school and got jobs. My mother got a job working on the dry cleaners. She put me through college working in a laundry. Folk in church say your mama made a way out of no way. That's what they would say, yes. Only one man was arrested for Elmore's murder, and the charges were later dropped by a grand jury. What are you thinking? Hard. Difficult. He was not accused of a crime, had not committed a crime, and yet murdered for being successful, leaving seven children and a wife. A loss never forgotten, wealth never reclaimed. When you're cut down to the bottom with nothing to build on, and that's basically where black people are, you have nothing to build on. For those who, who in this moment might ask, is Elmer Bowling's daughter asking for a handout? Absolutely not. My father did not, and nor will I. You got fired up just now, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That would be the last thing. Uh, my father believed in work. 700 miles north in Richmond, Virginia. We want to reclaim what is ours. A group of women entrepreneurs, Melanie Short, Kelly Lemon, and Rashida Creighton, are fighting to revive black prosperity in a district once known as the birthplace of black capitalism. At one point, um, we had six black-owned banks here in the city. There was always good eating in Jackson Ward. That is where entertainment was. Everything from the market to barbershops to salons, we had it. I mean, we had black-owned hotels. I'm the daughter of two entrepreneurs, actually, and the sister of an entrepreneur. And so, to me, it is my responsibility to continue to pass that down to my daughter. All that just a mile from what was once the Confederate capital. But by the 1960s, things had changed. Many of the things that we associate with thriving communities, like running water, sewer systems, trash collection, were all neglected in these communities. Public officials built what was then the Richmond-Petersburg Turnpike through Jackson Ward, which leveled 
roughly 730 homes. Also standing in the way of rebuilding were hurdles like redlining a practice where banks literally drew red lines largely around communities of color and the poor, denying loans, pigeonholing prosperity. If I superimposed a map of early 21st century poverty over any area with a redlined area, you would see a direct correlation from areas that still suffer um, from disproportionate poverty. The practice was outlawed in 1968, but its scars are still felt among entrepreneurs. There are places that I may walk into that I immediately feel on guard and know that I am not welcome. That may not allow me to get that same level of access. Yeah, yeah. I want to make sure it goes yeah, through. The these women that founded that. the Jackson War Collective, which connects black businesses to resources. The first challenge that you face as a black business owner is access to capital. I still can't make sure she's on the list. Before Dr. Chantel Brown could open her pharmacy doors in 2019, she says her loan application was rejected by three different banks. I was redlined. They didn't see that we would be able to obtain the finances, of course, to pay them back just based on the area that we were on. The amount that I was asking for, I had more than that in the assets that I had. That often makes me think, you know, maybe they just did not want to take that chance on me, maybe because of the color of my skin. That doubt, one that Jackson Ward Collective's Melody Short says she too often hears. I'm here for her three-month assessment. On this day, she's checking in with Dr. Brown. This is the only black and woman-owned pharmacy in the city. We're in the middle of a pandemic, and so I imagine she needs some additional support during this time. Even as she administers potentially life-saving vaccines against COVID-19, she says she's having trouble qualifying for new loans that would allow her business to grow. You know, we're creating jobs here. We're paying taxes here. If there's any opportunities for businesses like mine. Yeah, because I know your overhead is quite pricey. It's extensive. <laughs> Drugs are really, yes, really expensive. I do know that. <laughs> I don't want to name the financial institution, but I do have a thought. Okay. Um, potentially. The real work lies in creating equity as it relates to, you know, ensuring a level playing field with business ownership, with land ownership, with re real estate ownership. The struggle for economic justice is not a new one. And for Josephine, a more fundamental injustice also lingers. Do you ever wonder what happened to those men who killed your father? I had the opportunity to meet the white man's daughter, and I did not do that. I did not think I could, I guess, upset her, not knowing who she was. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You were worried about upsetting her? Yes. I would and not her want... father killed your father, and you are worried about upsetting her? Yes. So... I did not know enough about the circumstance to infringe on her rights as a human. So you decided to show her grace? Yes. A grace that was denied to your father? Yes. Today, a retired educator, Josephine devotes her time and talent to this old schoolhouse. In 1883, it became a separate building. Where she attended class in the 1940s. Here, she hopes to honor her father's legacy through something he believed in deeply, education. Something she says is key to closing the racial wealth gap. The teachers really cared about the students, and they wanted you to learn, and they didn't hesitate to paddle if they didn't <laughs> think you were learning. And if these old walls could talk, those carving schoolhouse love notes, generations old. Now, now that you and your sweet thing, put your name over here somewhere. Well, I, I was just five oh, at that right. time, that's, that's so, right. so, so I didn't, I didn't do it. <laughs> I but I would have. <laughs> She's converting this one-room school built in the 1800s into a museum and an adult learning center. Your dad never learned to read or write, but he valued education. He knew the power of it. Yes. I've been the first black in a lot of circumstances. First black PE teacher a couple of times. First black uh, administrator. First black president of the Alabama Association of School Psychologists. What will your dad say about you now? He would be proud. I wish I had the business sense that he had. Um, but I do have the fortitude. Josephine Balling McCall has proof. Diamonds do come from rock hard and by unspeakable pressure and pain. She hopes to both create new jewels and, wherever possible, reclaim old ones.
Our thanks to Byron. You can catch Byron's report on the battle for racial reparations in a new ABC News series, Soul of a Nation, examining the lived experiences of black Americans. Premiering tomorrow evening, 10 o'clock, 9 central, only on ABC. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.